Hey, it's Soleil, and this is episode 94 of the Orange Pill Investor. And today I want to answer the question, are index funds a bubble? And kind of think about what potential risks there could be. And, you know, I'll probably try to put something edgy in the in the post, like index funds are the worst or, you know, whatever. Index, fund, index funds suck. But... You know, I'm not trolling. Like, this is something that I legitimately think about. And I had I had wondered about it before just because it just seems like there, there, there's so much money going into it in a zombie-like fashion, all the passive investing. And when something just people are just doing things mindlessly like that. It just seems like the perfect opportunity to, to pull the rug out, rug out from underneath them. Um, you know, we had the housing crisis, we have dot com bubble, all that stuff is just like when everybody thinks that's just the surefire way to go, then that's when the bubble hits you. And it's always a different bubble. So it probably won't be the, you know, the real estate crash that happens next. It It won't be, a tech crash it'll it'll be something that nobody's expecting and on the screen i'm highlighting this piece by adrian morris uh, which inspired me to really start thinking about it again and in a particular way <clears throat> and, and in addition to um, punter jeff and rye Quant's work and the reasoning is this so so quant bros have been talking about all of the scenarios that could pump microstrategy. It could get included in, in indexes, and that's just going to cause uh, index funds to have to buy microstrategy at any price. And then there's, you know, there's prestige about that, which will allow microstrategy to borrow more money. And there's just this this, uh, you know, snowballing effect that happens. And in Adrian's piece, uh, he talks about uh, a recursive, recursive flywheel effect and really kind of highlights the shenanigans that go into companies engineering their financials just to get included in the S&P. And then that allows them to take even more, you know, do even more financial gymnastics to stay there and to, to buy back their own shares and just end up with these giant market caps. And it was just kind of like shocking, like, uh, you know, who the heck even are the, any of these companies? And so I thought about the way that passive investing works, it's almost like, I think um, Quant Rose also mentioned something like greater fool theory when they were talking about the GameStop, because GameStop was just a dead company. There was no reason for it to short squeeze other than the, the some people figured out that the shorts made them vulnerable. So there was nothing attractive about the company at all. So the only reason it that it was a viable short squeeze it was just because it was vulnerable to a short squeeze. There was nothing good about the company and microstrategy is a completely different animal. Like it's a legit company. And so there won't be, there, there won't be a moment when everybody's like, okay, we've made our money in microstrategy. Now it's time to cut bait and, and dip out like it, like they did for GameStop. Like it's, there's people that will just hold it forever. And then of course the, the true believers in Bitcoin have uh, diamond hands forged in fire that will just hold MicroStrategy forever. So I started thinking about what kind of risks there are for the spy. And it's basically the reverse. If the reverse happens of what causes them to get pumped up, you know, for me, when I mentioned greater fool theory, it's kind of like the, all the passive investing money goes in. And so the more money goes in, the more they're able to 
do these financial tricks to to stay in and grow it and then the value goes up and it makes it more attractive so more people buy in and i won't go so far as to call it a ponzi scheme but if anything happens to disrupt that recursive flywheel then if you know a couple of threads start to unravel and people start heading for the exits then or even like if the population declines and then there's just not enough people putting into passive indexes or you know something like that um there's a few different vulnerabilities that i see but one to me is bitcoin bitcoin etfs you know its derivatives and microstrategy to me could be a threat to index funds even though index funds will benefit from admitting microstrategy micro in and passive investors will just be investing in microstrategy without even knowing it if if people start looking at their portfolios and they realize that they're not growing as fast as other people's portfolios are because they're passive investing into bitcoin etfs or micro strategy then if it seems to me it wouldn't take much if just a few people start heading for the exits and the recursive flywheel starts to go in reverse i i kind of dubbed it the reversive flywheel i was pretty proud of that one and I just see then at at that point, if there's less passive money coming in, then the funds have less money to go into the market with to buy and artificially increase the value of the the stocks that are in the fund, which means those stocks go down, which means people's portfolios go down, and which could cause even more people to exit. And so... It just makes me wonder if if there are some threats to index fund saving that most people are not taking into account. I think people just think, okay, passive index funds, that just has worked for however many years, and it'll work forever. And that's the problem when when a disruptor enters the space and bitcoin is the apex predator of of the financial industry so it's going to disrupt everything so i don't it it's just going to it just remains to be seen how badly bitcoin will disrupt index funds and it may sound ludicrous to some people because they just have so much confidence in index funds but you know it, it's something that uh you know that i had kind of thought about but really looking at adrian and uh punter jeff and Raekwon's work made made it just really um become something that i just i, I really wanted to make a post about so I will definitely link uh, Adrian's article in the comments, as well as Quant Bros uh, videos. They have episode three out, which was amazing. Helps me get to uh, my destination today. I had like an hour and a half long road trip to see a friend. And uh, so I was grateful that I was able to... Uh, to listen to that on the way and and <laughs> i've actually listened to episodes one and two like two or three times and every time i do i i think of i i, I hear them some little sound bites and i'm like oh i gotta remember that so all right let me just scroll down is there anything that i i already responded to his um Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about today. So that's it for now. Be good, Joe.